Hey there guys and gals and welcome to a Q&A session right here at Thrill Ride Empire. I'm your host today, Neil the Thrill, and our hero, Jimmy Preston, issued out a challenge to all you savages out there on social media by dishing out any questions for the one man Thrill Ride to answer and he was going to deliver them to you right here on this video on Thrill Ride's YouTube channel. And without further ado, let me introduce the man of the hour, Mr. Popularity, yeah. New England's fastest rising yeah. wrestler right now. Yeah. There he is, the one man throw yeah. around. Jimmy yeah. Preston, come take a seat, brother. Look how cut up I am. Boom. Oh, oh wow. I look so good. Is that C4 right there? Sure is. C4. He's already ready, guys. Get ready to pound the gym like an absolute savage. But first, so here's the deal. This gives you an opportunity to get an idea of what Thrill Ride Empire Inc. is doing moving forward, our goals, but it also gives you a chance to get to know Jimmy a little bit better. You know what I'm talking about? There you go. What happened to my website? We need to get that back up on the screen. That's how you buy my merch puppets. You go to onemanthrillride.com. You can read my biography, my diet, my workout plan, and you can buy some merch and rock it for the holiday season. And I think right. I, I th All right, here we go. First question. Coming from Twitter, coming from Oglethorpe, and he goes, Thrill Ride, do you have any pointers that can help turn my friend from a three pump chump into a 60 minute man? You need to get laid more often, bro. Dude, sometimes you gotta slay a few dragons to get to the princess. You need to at bats, bro. You need to take that BP, you need to go oppo like taco, you need to get your reps, bro. Definitely. Get your reps, bro. Practice makes permanent. It doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. So get your reps in, bro. Get your reps in. That's my philosophy. Mm -hmm. What's the best way to prepare to tenderize with the floozies? What? Prepare. You open the application. If she's hot, you swipe to the right like an absolute savage. If she's ugly enough to hunt, you sweep to the left. There is no preparation, bro. If you need to prepare for Tinder, you're lost. Just quit. Sad. That's it. Sad, Just quit. Sad but very true. John, he goes, Would you rather have sex with a rabid grizzly bear to get a chance to get in the WWE or share a cell with Aaron Hernandez for a week for 15K? Am I being sodomized by Aaron Hernandez, or am uh, I just... I think you're just his bunkmate. Well, that's a no-brainer. I'm not having sex with a grizzly bear. Right. That's right. a stupid question. I'll room with Hernandez. I'll win him over. He'll think I'm awesome. And then for 15 k we'll just make more videos, and then we'll get signed like that. No kidding. You kidding me? If I had videos of Aaron Hernandez in prison, this channel would blow up, bro. That question sucked. Who wrote whose question was that? John. John? John, that question sucked, bro. Suck back, squid, non-athlete, normie. He goes... What is the proper flossing technique? That question sucks. Next one. Next one. Gotcha. Proper flossing techniques? I don't know. To do it once a day. Why are you at, Why are you asking the one man thrill ride a flossing technique, dude? Go to the dentist, okay? What the, what the hell was that? Here we go. Who said that? What's his name? Uh, the same guy, John. John. It's the same John. Yes. John, that question sucks, bro. What do you do with your life, John? John, you flossing? You know what? That's rhetorical. You have the, you have the ability. Question. You have the ability to ask me anything you want, and you ask me how I floss. Come on, bro. Bro. All right. Eat a bag of dicks. We got one coming from Sean out of Facebook. He goes, "How about making some savage ringtones? When are we gonna get some absolute savage ringtones?" That will be happening, guaranteed. I don't know when it's going to happen. I've been looking into it on iTunes. Obviously, I already have the content to do it. Um, I was actually in the process of doing it, but I don't have my tax ID. I need to give them my tax ID to let, demonstrate that I have the right to own the content. And once we get over that, that hurdle, I contacted the IRS um, this week and <laughs> tried to get them back to me because this is Thrill Ride Empire is actually a real uh, registered LLC with a tax ID. And uh, wow. chicks are begging for that USD. That's a real <laughs> thing. So I need to get the tax ID, go to iTunes, uh, we'll get the ringtones up. That absolutely positively will happen. I mean, just think, Sean, you can have an alarm clock set with Rawr! Pow! Like an absolute set. All those things will be guaranteed. We're going to have ringtones coming up. Brian out of Facebook, he asked, your cleft chin versus Brady's cleft chin. 
I, all the respect in the world to Tom Brady. He's one of the only grown men that I have a picture of in my bedroom. Uh, no homo. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But I got to give the nod to me. I think on the Mount Rushmore of butt chins, it goes John Travolta three, Tom Brady two, and the one-man thrill ride number one for the biggest, most powerful power cleft in all of sports entertainment. Wow. As there I said it, I'm giving the edge to me over Tom Brady when it comes to chin. Once again, Tom Brady's married to Giselle and a two-time Super Bowl MVP, two-time NFL MVP, and my favorite professional athlete. But if he saw that clip. But if he saw this chin, it would make him shake in his eye boots, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Jared asks, who wins in a push-up contest, you or Gronk? Me. How's that? I, um, I once did 105 push-ups after a keg stand when I was 21 years old. I'm not saying I'm a better athlete than Gronk, not even close. But I looked, so I saw this question, I looked it up. Uh, Gronk did his bench press. He's got longer arms than me, so he's disadvantaged. He did 225, 23 times. And I, the last time I, I did the, like, the NFL combine thing, and did 225 as many times as I could, I did 29 reps, which this year would have been number one among NFL running backs. So when it comes to pushing in that, that type of area, I win. I would beat Gronk, period. And, and if he has a problem with that, he can challenge me to a push-up contest. But Gronk would beat me in the 40. He would beat me in the amount of money he makes, the amount of women he sleeps with, and in every other aspect of life, probably. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to push-ups, as, as a bro, when it comes to push-ups, I'd win. Which, in life, means nothing. So Gronk, <laughs> so Gronk if you're Much watching. respect to Gronk. Much respect. Much respect to Gronk. Him respect. and Brady are my favorite Patriots, but he would not do more push-ups than me. But Gronk, if you're watching this... The savages want to see it. Thrill Rod versus you, push-up contest. The ants, the, it's... The, I'll bang out 108 in your face. The line is drawn. <laughs> Coming from Matt out of Facebook. And he asked, how did you come up with the one-man thrill rod in your other catchphrases? I came up with the one-man thrill rod in a poem to uh, in this, my senior year of football. So basically we had a football camp. Um, and back in, when I was in high school, it wasn't like... You know, it wasn't the pussification of America. We could do some pretty cool things. And um, so basically, we had a football camp. I quit playing football as a sophomore and did not play as a junior. So when we went to football camp, there's a talent show that all the sophomores had to perform, uh, basically for the senior and the upperclassmen. Since I had quit, I was forced to go up on stage. And I basically did a poem talking about no matter how much weight I could curl, I couldn't get any of the girls. Because in high school, I wasn't a ladies' man. At all. Surprising. Yeah, so I basically said that they were they were missing out on me because I'm a one-man thrill ride. It was really making fun of myself, but, uh, you know, I think it kind of caught on and it applied to wrestling. Like an absolute savage. The story behind that was I, was I was working out at World Gym Fox, bro, and I was doing lateral raises with pretty good weight. Even though I'm not a pro bodybuilder, I was doing, like, lateral raises with 50-pound dumbbells. And um, my buddy Jimmy Harrington came up to me when I was doing that. And I had my headphones in and I was in the zone and I was not in the mood to talk to anybody. You know what I mean? And uh, he basically hit me on the shoulder as I just completed a set. So I was pissed off and I take my headphones out. I'm like, what do you want? <laughs> and he said, are you side raising with the 50s? And I was like, yeah. And he just looked at me and went, you are an absolute savage. And it broke me down and it made me laugh. So the next promo I had was actually my very first promo when I was riding the Ring of, the Ring of Honor camp, um, when I was wrestling Brandon Webb, it came out. I just said it because it basically jogged my memory. I was totally off the cuff with that one. And basically, two days before that, Jimmy said I was an absolute savage, so. It went like wildfire. Yeah, it went like wildfire. A lot of people liked that. And then my second promo was the alumni video that has half a million views, so. It all escalated very quickly. Okay. Another catchphrase is, a lot of them come from my father. Sunken chest, I could eat a bowl of cereal out of is my father. Puppets is my father. Uh, see you dinks is something my buddy that I played college baseball with, Brian Lawler. He used to always say, like, if we'd get in an argument or if he was, like, leaving the lunch table, he'd be like, see you dinks. And I just thought it was a great signature, like, catchphrase to close out a promo. And I basically asked him if I could use it, and he was like, absolutely. Um, handsome is happening. Handsome is happening is my friend Chris Joseph. We always said that uh, we used to call each other handsome because we're kind of gay. Um, we're not gay. <laughs> no, like we used to just joke around and say that we were handsome men because we're arrogant like that. And um, yeah, I think he had just come to my, actually my grandfather's funeral. And my grandmother was like, who is that man? He's very handsome. I was like, that's my friend Chris. And uh, so I saw Chris like two days later playing street hockey or something. And I was like, Chris, my grandmother thinks you're handsome. 
And he was like, well, I think you're handsome, so I guess handsome is officially happening. And I started dying laughing. I said, I'm going to use that for my next promo. So those are some of them. Um, so they basically are for my friends. And I always keep a notebook. I have a notebook of like 20 pages of, of ideas. Whenever I come up with an idea, I write it down. Uh, always working, always thinking, try to be creative and original. We have at Davy Penny, and he goes, at Thrill Ride, what's one move in the ring that is underrated and hard to execute? How's this? The ability to incite a reaction from the audience without doing a big move. How's that? That's what it takes to be a good wrestler. Any, anybody who has an above average athletic ability can do a move. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm... 5'9", 210 pounds, muscle-bound guy. When I go to the top rope and do a Frankensteiner, it's impressive. If you're a buck 60 and you do a dive through the middle of the ropes, I don't think it's that impressive. Anybody who played a varsity sport can probably do that. What makes a good pro wrestler is the ability to incite a reaction from the audience without having to do all these big moves. If you need to do flips to get a reaction, you're not a very good worker. That's the definition of a worker, to work the audience to get them emotionally invested. That's my opinion. If you do uh, you know, some crazy Japanese suplex on somebody's head, yeah, if you throw someone in your head and you don't get a reaction, you suck. Like, I can throw someone on their head and get a reaction. There's no art in that. The art is to be able to set a reaction by doing less. That's where the talent comes in. You know what? I just thought of a new t-shirt idea. Cool moves, bro. Seriously, cool moves. Sick moves, bro. Okay. Nobody cares. The Rock, people's elbow. Hulk Hogan, a leg drop. The Ultimate Warrior, a splash. Okay, we're talking about guys who made a fortune and none of them had crazy moves. None of them. Um, <laughs> manscaping. My least favorite part of being a professional wrestler, besides having to go tanning year-round, would have to be like buzzing my body parts. It's the worst. And I'm a hairy guy, so like to buzz my legs, I buzz, I don't shave, I don't shave my legs, I buzz them. So if you're up close, you can see that I don't shave my legs, but it's, it's like swimming, it's kind of the name of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but I buzz, if you want, I'm not talking about shaving my private parts, like that's, you know, you can figure that one out on your own. We got another question from Mike out of Facebook, and he goes, if you could do one, if you could do one thing, would you rather hit a World Series Game 7 walk-off for the Sox, Going oppo like taco over the big monster. He knows I'm left-handed. Or headline WrestleMania and win the strap. The answers to uh, being the main event of WrestleMania. That is the goal. It's not a dream. It's a goal. Uh, me hitting a World Series walk-off would just be something that would happen with my eyes shut between the hours of 10 p.m. and, and 7 a.m. It's not going to happen. I was a Division Three superhero. I There was no shot at me playing in the big leagues. So... It's a no-brainer. Win, uh, win the strap at yeah, Mania. We have another question, and this is coming from at Frankie Spato. Twitter. He goes, at Thrill Rod, what position did you play at Fitchburg, and what was your lifetime batting average? Pass you by, glory days. Are we going to keep asking baseball questions? For the love of Pete, I was a left fielder. Division three baseball, I was playing in front of friends, family, and some people on campus. As a professional wrestler, I've wrestled in front of a couple thousand people wrestling former big leaguers. I have had more success as a professional wrestler than I ever did playing baseball. My junior year, I hit uh, 364 and led the team. And as a senior, I hit 375. No, so 365 as a junior, 374 as a senior. I led the team both seasons in hitting. I was a two-time all-conference selection, a two-year captain, the team's offensive player of the year as a junior, and the team's most valuable player as a senior. So that was my college baseball career. And what did that get me? Absolutely nothing but a viral video when I traveled back for an alumni game, okay? Because I was a Division Three superhero, man. The past is over. Those are the glory days. Sure, I was a good high school and Division Three baseball player, mm -hmm. but I am not a baseball player for Christ's sakes. He is a professional I am wrestler. a professional wrestler. And hate to go on back to the diamond, but we got at Davey Penny, and he wants to know, <laughs> what's your go-to celebration after hitting a double and looking back into the dugout? I didn't do any of that. When I played, I was a hustle guy. I never talked to umpires, and I never talked trash. 
I hate to break your heart, uh, the alumni game was a parody in the form of a wrestling promo. Because it was going to be funny, because we used to laugh at the guys, the alumni who would come in and take the game seriously when we played. So that's why I thought the whole, that's why the alumni video is funny. The concept of a guy who goes back to relive his glory days and is wicked excited about it is very funny. That's why I did the video, that's why I knew it was going to catch fire, but in no way, shape, or form was I that type of player at all. I was a Division III uh, solid ball player that had gap power, in no way, shape, or form was I getting drafted, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'm a better professional wrestler than I ever was a baseball player. Stop talking about the baseball. I'm sick of hearing about it, bro. It's over. It's over. It's been over. It's been over. They want to know about the throw run. They want to know about the baseball. I am not playing base. I loved it. It was a great part of my life. It was my life growing up. For 22 years, it was my life. It is over. It's been over for five years. When they hit your walkout music, strut out, get in bat. Oh my god. All right. Here we go. From Facebook, he asks, compare a waiver wire pickup in fantasy football to a pickup from Tinder. Points, stats, measurements. So comparing a wave your wire pickup in fantasy fa football to a pickup from Tinder. Does he want, want me to just shoot from the hip on this one? Here's the deal with Tinder. You can actually get a girlfriend or you can get laid, so it actually benefits you. Fantasy football, unless you're doing it for money, you're really doing it to be a joy boy. Here's the deal with me. I'm not anti-fantasy football. I think it gets you involved in the season. If you love football, even though it's not really a statistical game, it's a, it's a team game if you've ever played it. I think fantasy baseball makes more sense because stats matter. Uh, but I don't have time for that crap. You know, I work a full-time job, 9 to 5. I'm in the gym 21 hours a week. I wrestle pretty much every weekend. I manage a YouTube channel. Like, there is no time for me to engage in that, in that joy boy activity. If you do it, that's great. I'm not saying that... that um, that I'm better than you for not for not for me not doing it, you doing it, or anything like that. It's just fantasy football is not for me and never will be. You got Corey had a Facebook ask how to handle groupies on the road, do's and don'ts, and weight limit is acceptable. I don't like fat girls. I'm in shape. You got to be in shape. Um, that's that ruthless. I don't care. Well, here's the deal, man. I'm on the indies. First of all, they're not called groupies. They're called rats. <laughs> In the wrestling business, <laughs> yes, it's definitely more fitting. Fix them. Um, I don't. I've never ever um, hung out with a rat. A rat. Keep your eye on the prize. I keep my. First of all, I keep work at work. Um, the divas would be a girl. I, like, I'm, if I'm going to date someone, it's going to be one of the wrestlers, one of the divas, because they're typically really good looking and in shape. But I don't. Pretty much all the divas I've come across, they're either in relationships or they've dated somebody that I'm friends with. That's it's they're they're immediately in the friend zone. That's a total no bro move. To, no, you don't do it. You don't make friends in the locker room by hooking up with their girlfriends and stuff. Michael, if you could listen to only one song at the gym for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, Porn star dancing by My Darkest Days. It's my favorite song, and that's why I chose it as my entrance music. Bobby, that's right. This John goes. Who is your wrestling mentor? Um, I was trained by Spike Dudley. Um, when I came back as, at age 24, before that, it was a bunch of guys from Bob Evans to a bunch of guys at Yankee Pro Wrestling. Um, but I don't really talk to, to Matt Heisen or Spike uh, too often anymore. Believe it or not, the guys that I communicate with regularly, um, when it comes to like the charisma and the sports entertainment part, I talk to my good friend, I would say my best friend in the wrestling business, Mark Sherman. He's the guy who tells me, hey, that promo sucked. That promo was good. I wish you did this a little bit more. So Mark Sherman's my best friend in the business, and he's the guy that I talk to about like the promos and the stuff I put on YouTube. And a guy who I talk to a lot, who um, I went to his wedding recently, would be Mike Bennett. I think he's one of the best workers uh, in the world. I think uh, one of the best workers in all of Ring of Honor. I like to talk to him about like the, the mechanics of a wrestling match. So when I'm on the road, those are kind of the two guys that I ping the most. I don't know if I'd call them mentors, but they're definitely guys that I hold in their opinions in high regard in those separate categories. Joseph. Out of Facebook goes, Lindsay Lohan or Amanda Bynes? Which loony flues gets the injection of genetic perfection? Lohan or Bynes? Lohan or Bynes? Well, Bynes Two is crazy really, chicks. Bynes is really in the middle of her craziness. She's loco. Hasn't uh, Lohan, like, kind of, like, doesn't she look a lot better now? She like, looks a lot better. She cleaned herself up. I think she's been at rehab now about 90 times. So I think now she's... Honestly, I wouldn't touch either of them. Yeah. 
I'm, yeah. They're both damaged goods. Just just as bros, those two girls are labeled as danger zone. Yeah, that's danger. Those are cautions. Yeah, I'm all set with both. Cross the street when they, when you see them walking. Yeah, pass on both. Okay. Rock, tinder. Rock. The answer is tinder. Who would you want inside a steel cage? Me? You. Um, Dwayne Johnson, because the money would be the best. Michael, out of Facebook. When making the scrambies and holding the chi, what is the proper ratio of yolks to whites? Dude, did you watch the video? You don't take the yolk out, bro. Never. The yolk's got protein. If you take the yolk out, you're taking out like 60% of the protein. If you're an athlete, if you do cardiovascular conditioning, the cholesterol will not be an issue. Put the yolk in, bro. At least a dozen a day. If you're athletic and you're active, it won't get to you. If you sit in a cube and you don't exercise, then yeah, you don't want. It's not good for your heart and for your cholesterol to eat yolks. But if you're living an active lifestyle, keep the yolk in. A lot of nutritional value in it. We have a question coming from Travis. He goes, Von Erichs or Freebirds? I would I would take the uh, the the Von Erichs. The Freebirds were better promo guys, but uh, the Von Erichs were the baby faces at that time down in the south. I think they were the best. And Kerry, I always liked Kerry Von Erich, and he was wrestling with no foot. Nobody even knew it. He had a fake foot and a prosthetic foot. Wow. So I was always a big fan of the Texas Tornado. Big body guy, obviously back in the yeah, the big late eighties, early nineties. They were all jacked up. So I don't know. I like I like Kerry Von Erich. I like the uh, I like the Von Erichs there. Now. We're moving on to Chris. Hey Jimmy, I have a couple of questions for you. One, is Joe Madden really a level three sex offender? <laughs> I don't think so. He definitely listened to my WEEI promo. A lot of people like that. And I liked calling John Madden, Joe Madden, as level three sex offender. Oh. No, Joe Madden is not a level three sex offender. And I have a lot of respect for anybody who plays in the big leagues. But it was an opportunity for me to showcase my talents to a bigger audience and get on WEEI.com by roasting them. I'm sure. Sean, he asked, have you ever considered acting? Yep, absolutely. Actually, I like this question a lot. Basically what's happening right now is I'm turning 30 years old soon, so I'm kind of getting old to, be, to make it to WWE NXT. I'm not too old yet, but I'm getting to that point. And uh, the YouTube channel, it has got me down for extra work for WWE. And I thought maybe I'd get sent down to Orlando for a tryout. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, but it's reaching the point where, um, you know, this, this mortgage bill, it, it hits me every month. My car payment hits me every month. So I can't just sit around and wait for the WWE to get me an opportunity. If acting opportunities open up, I'm going to take those. And I'll be the first to announce here that um, there are talks. Or, no, there are talks. I'll come out and say it. I have agreed to film a pilot episode for a reality game show that is going to be pitched to Spike TV, to TNN, not TNN, to uh, FX, FX1, FX2, and HBO. It's called Naked Sports. So basically the one man thrill rides the host. It's like strip poker, except you're playing show, yeah, you know, sports like dodgeball and tug of war. And every time you lose, you've got to take off an article of clothing. So there, that's going to be pitched to Spike TV and all those things. I've agreed to film that. And... Um, Filming's going to take place soon. Um, that's going to go down. They're going to be editing it in January. And then we got to pitch it to, I think, uh, what are some other studios? Um, I think Legendary Pictures is going to get it. So it basically needs to get approved. If it's got to be approved, maybe you'll see me on TV. But, yeah, acting is something I'm looking into. I've, I've worked as a movie extra and stuff. And, um, yes, yeah, if wrestling doesn't work out, I'm also going to be taking um, – stand-up classes and improv classes at Improv Boston so and so I'm getting into comedy and stuff like that if wrestling doesn't work out. The one man throw ride is going nowhere regardless of whether he makes it to WWE or not. If I don't I'll get into stand-up comedy or acting or something like that. And that's why we need you Savage's support. But we need to take this channel from average to absolute savage. We got tw excuse me we got 2,800 subscribers we need to get it to 10,000 so if you haven't clicked on the watermark which is right there, click on it, hit subscribe. If you have a Gmail account, you're in. If you don't, create one. It takes you two minutes to create a Gmail account. If that's too much time, you probably suck at life. 
give the Gmail account. I'm not going to spam you. Nobody's getting spammed. You just get an email every time I release a video, and I turn ordinary people who watch into real fans who continue to follow me. And that's how we build it. And when we get to 10,000, Vince McMahon goes, this guy has a following. Maybe we should give him an opportunity. Maybe he can make us money. But at 2,800 subscribers, even though I have a million views, 2,800, that fills up, what, one-eighth of the Bank North Garden? Mm -hmm. This ain't getting it done. You need to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, you ain't supporting me. Subscribe! Subscribe! Don't be a dick. Click the link, bro. All right. Now, he goes, what are some of your favorite movies? Give us a top five. <sighs> top five movies. Number five. Go. I have to break it up into, into different areas because it depends on what I'm looking for. Like, um, my favorite movies in terms of, like, overall movies, overall. I would say... Miracle, which is a Disney movie, the story of the 1980 Olympic hockey team, Rocky, um, the original, pretty much the whole series, and uh, Shawshank Redemption are like movies that I mm. really, really like for movies. Inspirational movies. For comedy, which I typically like, Wedding Crashers is probably my favorite all-time comedy. Mom, meatloaf! Um, there's something about Mary, uh, Ace Ventura, obviously the first Dumb and Dumb the second one was, a, was an abortion. <laughs> but, um, you know, those are, those are probably my favorites, if I could just list off a few. Okay. Oh, Major League. I love Major League. Oh, yeah, we kind of left that out. Yeah. Who do you smash? Who's your character? DK or Captain Falcon? And because I grew up, you know, playing, the hell is he playing talking video games, he's talking about Smash Mario Brothers. Dude, um, I don't play video games. I hook up with chicks. It, exactly. What, oh, my God, that sucked. That's, that question sucked, Sean. Tell us a little about what you do for a living. Wrestling is just part-time, right? Oh, he wants the personal information. Um, I sell. Uh, I'm in healthcare-related sales. We'll put it that way. I, for an industry-leading company, I will say that I'm going to keep the name of the company private. Those within the company know I do this. Uh, and I will say that they've been very supportive and pretty cool about the whole thing with some of the content that I've come out with. So I really appreciate uh, that, and they know um, that this is something that I do part time. But yeah, I'm in I'm in sales. Coffee is for closers, bro. ABC always be closing. A A F T O always ask for the order. You know what I'm talking about, bro? All right. Next question is coming from Ryan, and he goes, "What's your take on men's slow pitch softball?" I never got into it. I, you know, I, and I, and I never will, I don't think. I mean, maybe you like to do company stuff if it's co-ed and there's a lot of chicks around. But uh, I took baseball very seriously when I grew up. And like, once I got done playing baseball, it's like, I can't, I can't adapt to like slow pitch softball. Oh, yeah. It's like, if I step on a baseball field, it's going to be competitive. I'm going to run hard and play hard. Right, I right. can't force myself to do that in a slow pitch environment. Mm -hmm. That's I, just me. I just think give a thumbs up to them just because they're out there doing something athletic. At least they got yeah. out of the house and like some of these squids that, you know, just sleep in their mother's basement. It's, yeah, it's better than doing nothing. I mean, uh, the weight room and wrestling is my softball, so. Nothing against it. I'm just, I just don't participate. We got a question coming from Glenn, and he goes, if the one-man thrill ride goes golfing, what three people round out your dream foursome? I don't go golfing. Golfing sucks. I hate golf. I'm sorry. I hate golf. I have too much ADD. I, I can't. I gotta. I gotta move around. I can't stand still. I respect golf, and it's a great way to make a living. You can be an athlete for a long time, but I just cannot get into it. I can't watch it. I just think it sucks. I'd much rather be in the gym lifting weights. But, for, just but for the sake of the question, say no, you do. I'm like not answering it. It sucks. Your question sucks because golf sucks. But he doesn't even care about golf. He just wants to know. Who's my foursome? Um, uh, Jenna Jameson, uh, Interprime, Brianna Banks, Interprime, um, and a little bit of Sarah J. Who's Sarah J? <laughs> okay. okay, Leslie Zen, Jenna Jameson, Brianna Banks. Right. All right, we have another question from Brandon out of Facebook, and he goes, How would J Thrill address Ferguson? Do you mean the redhead from Clarissa Explains It All? Hey, hey, Bill Clinton said this. As a country, in terms of being racist, in terms of being sexist, in terms of homophobia, in terms of accepting people's religion, America is more open and accepting than ever before. Our biggest problem as a country is we can't sit in the same room as someone who disagrees with us. Preston for president, 2016.
We got another question here out of Facebook coming from Billy, and he goes, "What's the most obnoxious thing?" that you see people do at the gym that just pisses you right off. I think we've already... Yeah, I, slamming bit. weights is obnoxious. I was never a weight slammer. If you're doing deadlifts, you gotta slam them a little bit just because you gotta put them down without hurting yourself. Exactly. Um, I hate slamming weights, but the biggest thing is when I say, when you lift away from your pay grade, don't take 20 pound dumbbells and bring them over to where the 125s are. Because the guys who are training hard are like competing for a contract. Mm -hmm. And this is coming from Tenacious Tate out on Facebook. He called me once. He did? I swear to God, he found my number and he called me. What a savage. Creepiest but yet most awesome moment so far of all my fans. He asked you, what kind of energy drinks do you back up? C4, brother. It's my favorite pre-workout. I also like Ravage, as I am an absolute savage. What gym do you back up? What gym do I back? What gym do you back? Right now, I work out at Answers Fitness in North Alboro, Massachusetts. But, awesome gym. But the original headquarters, where Handsome Happens, where it happened, where it was born, was World Gym Foxboro. I really like the ownership there. They have a nice family establishment. I started going there when I was 13 years old. My dad brought me in there uh, because he felt like I was undersized. I needed to become a savage. So I, I was working out there for about 15 years uh, before I went to Answer is Fitness. So I would say World Gym Foxborough and Answer is Fitness are my two favorite gyms. John out of Facebook, he asked, if you could pick one legendary wrestler as your tag team partner, who would it be? Oh man. That's a tough one. He wouldn't fit um, as my tag team partner, but my favorite guy growing up as a kid was Brett the Hitman Hart. So, I think that would be cool to be able to partner with him, but the one man thrill ride with the strutting. A little heart foundation. Yeah, I don't know if 3.0 with thrill ride and Brit. I don't know if the thrill ride and the excellence of execution are like, you know, a cohesive tag team, but if I could pick one, it would probably be the Hitman. So, we got another question here from John out of Facebook, and he asked, Who would you like to be some of your opponents in the wrestling ring? Right now, I'd love to wrestle Dolph Ziggler. I always say that my, uh, just because I'm from Boston, uh, basically, that I would love to wrestle John Cena in the Bank North Garden. I think that would be pretty cool because he's a local guy, I'm a local guy, and grow up going to the TD Bank North Garden, it'd be pretty cool to wrestle uh, the biggest star in the company there. We have a question from Dwayne, not Dwayne Johnson, but Dwayne out of Facebook. Dwayne Gill? Dwayne, no. no. Boom. Who is the kid in your most recent videos? I like this guy. It's Neil the Thrill right here. Right here. Dude, he's got the guy who's going from average to absolute savage. And episode three will be coming out around Christmas. We have some issues with, you know, you're heading home to Georgia for Christmas. I know. So we can't do the filming. And, and it's not easy to go into Planet Fitness and invade it when you're going to be talking trash about it the entire time. So we're dealing with some logistical issues. But once those are solved, average to ab absolute savage, episode three will be coming at you at a pretty ferocious pace. You we got one from Dennis out of Facebook, and he asked, how does the one-man thrill ride handle wingmen on the bar scene? Handle wingmen? Handle wingmen on the bar scene. Like, if I went into the bar with you, we're trying to match some smoke shows, how would you like me riding co-pilot? Hmm. Or does the one-man thrill ride prefer riding solo? I way prefer riding solo. I'm of the belief that... Uh, that men don't pick up women, women pick up men. Men just have to put themselves in a position and not F it up, basically. That's how I feel about it. Um, but I always do better solo. You don't do well when men compete against men, particularly friends. Right. Uh, that's typically when stuff doesn't happen. If you isolate, um, you know, at some point of the night, obviously you have to break the ice and say something funny, say something genuine. But I, I'm not one to pick up girls at bars. I, I'm not a big drinker because, you know, <laughs> Inside this tank top, objects are more ripped than they appear. You know what I mean? I don't drink like a frat house joy boy with a swollen, fat, disgusting face like a lot of you norms. I'm actually an athlete. So basically when I go out, it's to have a couple with my friends and we'll talk about the Patriots. And I'll deal with the chicks through Tinder, uh, other channels, uh, texting, phone calls. I don't really go to bars to pick up chicks. If it happens, it happens. What was your least favorite opponent, big partner, moment of your wrestling career so far? Just out of wrestling in general, what has been your least favorite moment about being in there? Okay. Um, this is a good one. The wrestling fans will enjoy this one. So, I was wrestling for Northeast Wrestling, and I wrestled Vader. 
and uh, we're getting inside baseball here. We're shooting. So basically, I met Vader, and um, we're backstage. We're talking, and yeah. So basically, he seemed to be really excited to be working with me. He saw me. He was like, "Oh, this guy's an athlete. He's in shape. We could probably have some fun out there." He was actually pretty good. Usually, when you wrestle a name, a guy like Vader, who's a WCW champion, who's a star in the WWE in Japan for a lot of years, usually you just go in there and get squashed real quick. But he wanted to work with me and give me some moves. I actually body slammed Vader. I uh, hit him with a chair, hit some of my moves and everything. And um, he was really excited to work with me. It seemed like he was my buddy. We went out there, we had the match, and I basically made a rookie mistake. And um, so he hit me with a Vader bomb for the finish. Beat me one, two, three, and I got out of the ring too quick. <laughs> so basically, when he hit the Vader bomb, out of respect to him, I rolled out of the ring uh, pretty quickly. And you know, I looked for a referee to kind of drunk stumble out to kind of give him the ring to celebrate, give him the spotlight. That's not how Vader interpreted it. <laughs> he interpreted it as, I no sold his finish. So I'm not thinking anything of it. I'm in the back. Vader walks by. And I'm like, how was it? Was it good? And he was just like, oh, whatever. And he kind of like no sold me and went back downstairs into like the locker room to change and everything. And I was like, well, that didn't seem right. And I looked to my buddy, Mark Sherman. I was like, something's not right. And I went downstairs to talk to him. And he was like, so I, he's sitting down and I approach him and I'm like, hey, so how was everything? Was I off on anything? And he just looked right at me, dead in the face. He took his mask off. He's like, you fucking no-sold my finish. He's like, you fucking killed my gimmick in Japan and this and that. And I was just like, I was just trying to give you the ring out of respect. And he was fucking pissed. He, and he said to me, he goes, um... You know, if this was 10 years ago, I would have fucking beat the shit out of you for real. I would have brought you back in the ring and beat the shit out of you. And then he said, you know, maybe you're a tough guy and you could fight me, you could beat me up, but I was going to punch you in the face. And, um, you know, I felt really, I actually felt really bad about it because I really wasn't trying to do that. My intent right. was really to give him the ring, give him the spotlight. He's the name. I'm just a, I'm just a guy with a YouTube following in Boston, really. Um, so I, that sucked. And I remember being bummed out about it. Um, so that was probably my worst experience as a pro wrestler because he was pissed at me. He probably still hates me if he, if he even remembers it. But um, I would say that's my worst, worst experience. I wouldn't say he's my worst opponent. He was, people thought he was stiffing me because like, he's real heavy with the punches and, the, and, the, and his moves, his clotheslines. Uh, he was firm and stiff and he's a big guy, but he was very safe. You know what I mean? He, he hit me hard, but in a safe place. It's, it's not ballet. It's supposed to hurt a little bit. Supposed to hurt, not injure, and he was he was a pro. So you that was probably my worst experience, though. You live and learn. You live and learn. Yep. Michael out of Facebook, he goes, "Were you excited to see Sting in WWE, and does he qualify as an absolute savage?" He's an absolute legend. Um, he was the franchise of WCW for a long time. I was always a WWF fan, WWE fan growing up. So Sting to me was never. Uh, one of my favorites as a fan. Uh, as a wrestler, you know how good and how talented he is. So was I excited? I'm a grown man trying to make it to the WWE. Very rarely do I get excited over stuff. It's, I appreciate the work of those guys. I appreciated the match, uh, the Survivor Series match that Dolph and uh, Seth Rollins had to finish out the show. I thought that was unbelievable. So I was more impressed with that. I mean, the Sting return was obviously very special for the fans, but I, was, um, I thought the sequence the closing sequence between uh, Ziggler and Seth Rollins was uh, the best finish to a match I've seen all year. I would say it's pretty much match of the year besides Cesaro and Cena that I saw on Monday Night Raw, I think back in either February or late mm -hmm. January. Mm -hmm. Those are probably my two favorite matches of the year so far. Matt, out of Facebook, goes, earliest memory of wrestling. Early me earliest memory of wrestling for you. Ha! <laughs> Lex Luger body slamming Yoko Zuna on the USS Intrepid. That's when I became a fan. I had immediately hang out with my Uncle Joe in Foxboro. Um, from that point on, I became a huge wrestling fan and like, basically retroactively watched. He had every single pay-per-view ever up to that point on tape. So once I saw that and got ready for the 93 SummerSlam between Lex and Yoko, I watched all the previous things, and I was hooked from that point on. So then, All right, next question is from Keith, and he goes, Which flues do you choose, North or South Shore? I wouldn't know anything about this. North, <laughs> so North Shore is like north of Boston. South Shore is kind of where we're from. I, 
uh, North Shore girls have always been more attracted to me because I'm kind of uh, GTL, gym tan and laundry. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, okay. I'm kind of I give that vibe off, even though I'm not really like that. Right. Um, so I've always had more success with the dark hair, dark hair, dark skin girls who go tanning and are kind of uh, BNT. I think the expression is. But I prefer South Shore girls. They're a little nicer, I think. Mm -hmm. Southie. No, Southie South Boston. That's a different thing. South Shore is kind of. Uh, I guess where would where would South like South of um, I guess technically Mansfield and Foxborough North is t I guess that's the outskirts of the South Shore. But okay. It's kind of closer towards like the Cape and stuff. Okay. I think would be the South Your Shore. Your answer just made a lot of sense to me. Right. Question from Dwayne. He Dwayne goes, is firing them off. Bro. Dwayne is firing them off at you left and right. He goes, can you make a DVD documentary with a best of matches and bonus material? The problem with the matches is that the matches are owned by Northeast Wrestling and Chaotic Wrestling. So if you want to see me in action, you got to talk to them about releasing those DVDs and selling them. I don't, I don't have the ability to do that. Um, in terms of a documentary, I actually had a friend from high school who filmed a documentary with me last year, and uh, it just hasn't I mean, it's, he's in the process of editing it. It hasn't come out yet. But he's going to be pitching it to film festivals and stuff like that. But it's a pretty cool inside look at everything I do. Um, and a lot of pro wrestling documentaries have been made from indie guys trying to make it. But this one's more uplifting and inspirational. is isn't depressing like a wrestler and, and things like that. So um, hopefully that comes out soon. If not, you never know. But I, I can't um, sell DVDs of wrestling matches from promotions that I'm not in charge of. I get, I get heat for that. A lot of legal issues. I do have some matches on YouTube and some highlights. So if you go on my YouTube channel, I have an entire section of my channel that has matches that I do have um, the ability to, to show you. Okay. Another question from at Flinyard Vines. And he goes, at Thrill Rob, when was the last time you had chi? I hold the chi on the reg, bro. I'm not a big chi guy. I don't think chi adds any value to a hamburger. I want the beef, bro. I'm a fully loaded meat stick. What does she bring to the table other than like, making my love handles jiggle in <coughs> spandex underwear? No. No. I hold that she, bro. She adds no value. Never do I eat she. Ever. I'm anti she. Kevin MCCWI, and he goes, that thrill rod. I called my boss a suck bag and told him to promote me, puppet. Was this the way to go about it? Does your company have an HR department? If the answer is no, that's a great move. Be aggressive. Let them know your value. Let them know what you're worth. If you do have an HR department and that's documented, that could be grounds for termination. Mm -hmm. So, 50-50, flip a coin, who knows? Could have been good, could have been bad. We'll see where the chips fall. Mm -hmm. Pow! See ya, dink!